What up guys, Mad Scientist 7890 here. I uh, just want to mention before I get started here with this, I'm going to do it in the lab video. Um, if you guys are in the Midwest area, St. Louis, Chicago, Illinois area, um, there's going to be a, a St. Louis Anarchy show this weekend. Um, let's see closer to St. Louis, the St. Louis area. Um, I don't know all the exact information, but um, like I said, it'll be, it's October 8th this Saturday. Um, Alex Shelley's going to be there, and he's going to be having a match. And the, the main event of the show is a, a no-rope barbed wire match for the St. Louis Anarchy title. So that ought to be a lot of fun. So if you guys are in that area, the St. Louis area, um, you know, check it out. They have a website. If you need more information, I can't seem to remember exact exact uh, address and, you know, all that. But look it up if you guys are interested. Just thought I'd throw that out there. With this video, I'm going to do my um, top wrestling pet peeves. Um, you know, I narrowed them down here to 10 that I, you know, I really was things that bother me. And um, in no specific order with any of these, I'm just going to you know, name them off, name off what I don't like about them, you know, what, why I consider them a pet peeve to me. Um, the first one is going to be um, the ladder placement and, and ladder matches. I mean, I guess you could throw this in there with, like, ladder placement, um, you know, struggling to get the titles or the contract or what it is that's hanging and, you know, that being a problem. And then also the slow climb to get the title or contract. What really bothers me more than anything with this is the ladder placement. Um, you know, obviously placing it, you know, for a spot and it's predictable off to the side when, you cl when someone climbs up. Um, you know, not being in the middle of the ring to where you can actually get something in it, being completely obvious that a spot is going to happen. Um, I think that's poor match management, you know, or booking, I guess you could say, of, of a ladder match. Um, you know, pretending like you're going to go up the ladder to get the title when the ladder's way off the side of the ring, it's not in the middle of the ring, to me, just, you know, fakes believability and, and, it, and to me just hurts the quality of ladder matches, to me personally. The slow climb as well, just pretending like you don't have enough stamina to get up the ladder, uh, and, and then, you know, being up there and not being able to get the title and being there for, you know, 30 seconds, obviously you're going to win, you know, and then having another wrestler pretend like he's got to come up and, and, you know, act like you're not going to get the, uh, that bothers me as well. But the big thing is the ladder placement uh, is one of the pet peeves that I really don't like. Uh, next is pretending like things didn't happen. Um, this mostly happens in WWE. WWE, of course, um, the big one that really happened um, here recently was the them pretending like Triple H and Undertaker didn't have a match at WrestleMania prior. I think they were trying to make it bigger, you know, a big spectacle, you know, acting like these guys have never fought, you know, at, at a WrestleMania, and they had, they had, and uh, it's interesting because um, they do this with a lot of different things. They pretend like, you know, things didn't happen. They pretend like, you know, Jerry the King Lawler was never in a title match, you know, and he was. He did, you know, and they did that as well. Also, they completely washed, you know, the slate of Benoit, which, you know, it makes sense, but there's a lot of other things. Those are just a couple of exa a couple of big examples that I would use um, for pretending like things didn't happen. And TNA does this as well. Um, you know, I can't think of any off the top of my head, but, you know, those were some specific ones that I remember. Uh, next, makeshift tag teams. You know... One thing I hate worse than, you know, if you don't have anything for anybody, uh, creatively, I guess, WBTNA or whatever, they just take two guys that aren't doing anything and throw them together and just have a make, makeshift, ta makeshift tag team. You know, they don't have uh, a tag team name, they don't have matching gear, they just, they're just thrown together and they don't look right, and it's, 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 it's uncreative, it's unoriginal, and that bothers me more than anything when they throw, like, you know, Shawn Michaels and, and John Cena together. Or they throw, you know, two guys together that make no sense. You know, they're, um, I was kind of leery about Kofi and, and Bourne. I thought it would be cool dynamic. But, you know, they got matching gear and they got a name. So, I feel like that's an okay, you know, thing. Swagger and Ziggler is another story. These guys are just thrown together. They have no dynamic or anything like that, personally. Uh, I think it would be interesting to see what they could do. But, just makeshift tag teams in general bother me. Um, next one is people not getting used but getting over. Um, I think a guy like Daniel Bryan is a perfect example of this. I think a guy like Zack Ryder is a perfect example of this. Um, more than anything, um, I would say more well-known independent talent that they kind of don't want to, you know, push or pursue or, you know, give a chance to. You know, a lot of people, um, 
there's a lot of people that aren't superstars that I think people want to see, um, you know, get pushed and get used, and they're over with crowds, but people, I guess they don't, they don't want to push them. And then on the opposite end of that is, is like The Miz is somebody who the fans really at first didn't want to see get pushed, pushed didn't think he was going to be anything, and now he's pushed into a main event level, and now he's doing the stuff that he's doing, and it's come out of this pretty good. But that's one thing that really bothers me is when people are getting over, no matter what, um, they should, if they're getting over like really good, like a Zack Ryder, they should get used because they're going to make you money. That's all I'm you know, saying about that. Um, another pet peeve going on right now, there is weak to no managers. Um, I think, you know, managers help pe certain people get over. If you want to use a person, that's great. Uh, WWE literally has Vicky Guerrero. That's it. Um, I think, you know, a guy like Wade Barrett could get over better. I know he can talk on his own, but I think he could get over maybe with, like, William Regal as his manager or, um, you know, have, like, you know, uh, Abraham Washington come back, maybe manage Mark Henry, you know, something like that. Some more, you know, some different people to, to you know, get over. Um, find some good talkers. If you're not going to have them wrestle, you're not going to use them to, to be wrestlers, these, you know, these other people that are maybe under developmental, have them come in and be managers, you know. Uh, I know there's some good talkers that are not very good wrestlers, and they could definitely help out some guys who they would want to push. So I think the fact that there's no managers, and there's literally no managers at TNA as well. Um, Ring of Honor's doing okay with managers right now. You have Truth Martini and, um, you know, some other people. So, I mean, they're working on that. But I would really like to see some more managers in, you know, professional wrestling. I think it helps guys get over. Um, next one is... The pretending like the Attitude Era was perfect. Um, you know, this really is a pet peeve, not of, of, of what happens in like on the show or in wrestling, actually. This actually is more of a pet peeve of, you know, the IWC and the YWC. You know, acting like... Acting like the Attitude Era was the be-all, end-all, the best, you know, thing ever. When they can run... When they run storylines like, uh, you know they're trying to do that kind of stuff now and if we you, if we were to see that storyline that happened in night of champions uh, you know in the late 90s people would have loved it or the one that happened at uh hell in a cell people would have loved it i liked the one from hell in a cell i thought that was i liked that ending i didn't care for the one you know at night of champions obviously but just saying you know all this stuff now sucks or isn't good because you know for whatever reason because it's overbooked or crappy or whatever um I think if it would have happened to Attitude Era, everyone would have creamed over it. So I think that's one thing where people pretend like that was the best era ever. And it was kind of like one of those things where it's like, you know, uh, at the time it probably was, but we're in a different kind of, you know, time period. So I don't know. It's interesting. People's opinions on it. Like I said, I thought Attitude Era was good, but, um, you know, for people pretending like it was the perfect, greatest thing ever, um, you know, I think is kind of stupid. Um, next is botching. Not going to say much about this. Spoke about it a lot. Um, Pet peeve of me is botching. You know, this is the one thing that really ticks off, ma you know, quality of star rating to me in matches. Uh, you know, not storyline stuff, not, you know, anything else. Botching is what really, to me, hurts the, you know, the in-ring product. And that was just one thing that I always speak about. It bothers me. Um, another thing that a pet peeve is non-live shows or spoilers. I guess you consider both. Um, you know, I always make it to where I always catch Raw. Raw is something I always watch, but, you know, sometimes I pass on SmackDown, sometimes I pass on Impact or, you know, tape shows if I got to work or go to school or do whatever. I'll, I'll read the spoilers. But if I'm not, you know, if I'm not going to, you know, miss it, I, I'll wait and I'll just watch it. But I think the fact that things are being taped, you know what's going to happen beforehand, it really hurts the, the rating. I think SmackDown and Impact should be live as well. Um, I think the live Tuesday SmackDown did very well. Um, so that would be something I would look forward to if WWE could really do that. Same thing with TNA. I would actually watch TNA a lot more if it was live. But after I read the spoilers and be like, man, this is horrible. There's no point in even me clicking my you know TV on and watching it. It really hurts their product to me. So that would be another thing. Uh, next one is, a lot of people know this one, um, the Babyface Hot Spot Run. Um, a lot of people, the big one a lot of people know of is the John Cena Spot Run where he basically does, um, you know, his his five moves of doom real quick, those five moves, um, you know, he does the, the proto-bomb, then the, 
five knuckle shuffle, then you know the F FU or attitude adjustment. You know he does his, you know his shoulder tackle thing. Gets the crowd. Randy Orton has one. Steam Punk has it. And you know, I, and you can say that he does doesn't, but he does. He has a little like run if you really pay attention. Uh, Rey Mysterio does. It's mostly baby faces, big name baby faces. Um, Kurt Angle has one. Um, so I mean, if you really just pay attention and watch them. It, it's something that bothers me because it's so predictable. Because to me, it feels like it sets up that you're gonna that you know the mat that the match is going to end in the next three to five minutes, if not earlier. Um, usually when that run happens, so that bothers me. Um, and then finally, the last one is uh, the big, big pet peeve that really, really bothers me, maybe more than anything, is you're a no, you're a nobody unless you work for WWE or TNA. Um, I think that's complete crap. Um, you know, when they bring in guys like Dan Bryan, when they bring in guys like um, you know, Evan Bourne and CM Punk, when they first bring them in, they completely discount what they did on the indies, like, and none of it actually mattered. You are nobody until you're in WWE. You're nobody until you're, you know, in, in TNA. Another thing that is along the lines with this is um, the name changing of, of wrestlers on the FCW roster and bringing them to the WWE. Some of the names are just absolutely asinine, you know, flipping Brian Danielson to Daniel Bryan. I mean, it's not that horrible, but they want to basically say they want to switch his name, trademark it, but they want it to be close as possible to his other name so they can still grab that indie viewer, basically. Um... And to me, I think that's kind of crap. I think you'd be a little bit more creative than that, honestly. Um, I would definitely try to be more creative than that. But like I said, the thing about it, it really bothers me that people consider, a lot of fans consider people who are on the indies um, nobodies until they've made it in WWE. Whereas in, you know, if you, Ring of Honor is a company that prides itself on having great matches and being that athletic contest and that sport in professional wrestling. I think it's something that's interesting and a lot of people feel the same way you know I think that sometimes guys get hired um, and I feel like they should just come right in they don't need to go developmental they don't need to change their name you know a perfect example this is Claudio who just got signed Claudio is a primed he's in his prime he doesn't need to go to FCW I mean unless he's developing some kind of character I have no idea what the plan is with him same thing with Tyler Black is a prime you know John Moxley as well so it's interesting to see you know, that kind of thing, and they want to create a totally different idea of this character or this wrestler when he was on the indies and have him come in, which, you know, the best thing to do is have this person come in as the person they were on the indies. That's really how you're going to get your, your, your independent wrestling viewer back. Um, and I think they did a good job with Daniel Bryan by bringing him in, just letting him be himself. I thought that was a smart move. Punk basically is now himself. It took a couple of years for him to really get to where he was in, in, in a Ring of Honor level, I think, um, as being himself. But um, it, it's interesting. So that's one of uh, pretty much my ten pet peeves that, you know, things that bother me. With prof professional wrestling as a whole, different things. Um, you know, like I said, let me know if you guys got any of your own. You put them in the comment box, anything like that. So, uh, like I said, thanks, thanks for watching, guys. And let me know about your guys' stuff. So, thanks.